Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Yo, what up? It's say my name. Yo, what's up? It's Cream. What's up, guys? This is Ryan Tim. This is Blunt and Blonde. My name's Allison Wonderland. Solomon King here. It's Black Tiger Sex Machine. This has been Trilvo. And you're watching Trilvo.com. 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 And you're watching Trilvo.com. Disillusionize me, Captain. <laughs>first creating when I was young I was um, painting Ninja Turtles and everything you know like little kids and that's how I kind of knew I was interested in art you grew up in Guatemala and then you moved to Houston can you tell us how each city and culture has affected your art yeah it has affected my art uh, a lot I would not be here if I would not came to to the United States because you know like, I got to do graffiti and that was a big impact on my life like that like led the way for the things that I do now, you know? How do you think Houston has affected your art? Oh man, like it's who I am, you know? Like I like everything that I have, everything that I do, everything has developed from my art is influenced by you know, everything around Houston. So Can you tell us what being a muralista means to you and how you developed that style? Well, being a muralist, uh, like I, I came from, I came from graffiti. You know, now I don't do graffiti no more. But and, and I, I am a, a, a muralist, somebody that does murals, not lettering, and you know, the art speaks for itself. And it's it's a big change, you know. But I really appreciate people that do art, uh, that do graffiti. Because man, like man, like that's that's love for me. That every time I see some graffiti, man, I react to it. Okay, so you ex you explained to us earlier off camera that you know you are you're not like to call yourself a graffiti artist. Can you talk to us about why? Well, I don't like to call myself a, a graffiti artist because graffiti is illegal and that's the way they're supposed to stay. Like uh, it be like when somebody calls me a graffiti artist when I'm painting something that I'm getting paid for and it's something you know like that uh, that everybody's okay with, you know that's not a graffiti. Graffiti is supposed to stay illegal. That's what it is, you know. And like you know, I respect you know it's um, the respect to my friends that do graffiti. When somebody calls somebody that just grabs a spray paint can and says, "Oh, he's a graffiti artist," no, he's not. He's just somebody that grabs the can and is doing art with it. You know, graffiti artists, are people that really like risk their time, their lives, and go out there and do things that other people cannot do. You know. What inspires you right, to do art? Like, what what do you really get inspired by? Uh, I get inspired by the way that I'm feeling. You know, and like uh, the the atmosphere that I'm at. You know, and like then it goes you know like um, I make it fit to what I'm feeling or where the environment that I'm at can you talk to us about the wooden spray painted character well he came about that at the beginning he was a spray paint tip but then I, I noticed that a lot of people did that already so I kind of wanted to change them up a little bit so he became a wooden tip head but then I made him more square so he kind of developed and transition to something else and I just kept on going with it and that's where it went to. Can you talk to us about the significance of the number three in your art? The number three in my, in my art, um, well, those are self conflicts that I have. They're, they're bad things but they're not like really, really bad things. It's just things that, we, that I, I go through life like everybody else, you know, like uh, things that fuck up, things that like, uh, don't go right when I want them to, you know, so those three or like situations that in my life that I have, that I have gone through, they have given me more wisdom to do more things and those, and those things I put them, so uh, those three characters, I put them everywhere so it can remind me of those things so next time I come across them, I know what to do, I don't mess up no more. Have you painted at festivals before and what do you think of the Electric River Festival? I have painted in a festival. This is the second time painting an electric 
festival. It was a really good experience last year. I had a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I got to do what I wanted to do. And it was, it, it, was a, it was a really good experience. What did you paint last year? I painted my tip head. And, like, he, I don't know, how can I explain? He was taking off. He was he he was moving forward and I don't know, like that just came out of, out of like that was just that day it came out like I didn't even knew that I was gonna paint that. What do you think? What do you think you might end up trying to paint this year? I'm not sure when I when I'm there I'm no. Nice, that's awesome. So okay, um, how do you correlate music with your own artwork? Well, man, it goes hand by hand. You know, sometimes I'm painting at the wall. You know, I'm I'm at a wall like about from six hours to 12, 13 hours and you know, like sometimes you need motivation and music is one of the things that like motivates you, you know, it depends what you listen to, you know, and, and everything like, uh, man, you know, it brings hype to the wall when I'm doing it and like when I'm already kind of like giving up, like man, you know, I, I listen to a song or something, I'm like, whoa, let's, let's get this going, you know. Let's get it. Okay, and finally, the last thing I want to ask you, is what kind of message do you have for other artists who are aspiring to get out there, get their name out there, and make this their career? Man, well, it's a hard world out there, you know. It's life, you know. If you want to get it, you're gonna get it. If you if you, if if you don't, you're not, you know. That's it. Well, hope to see you at Electric River this year. It's gonna be fun. So hope to see you out there.